I don't think you understand how impossible it is to understand how big really big numbers are. Yeah, sure, we all know that infinity goes on forever, and some of you might even know about things like Googleplex and Graham's number that, sure, they're also just completely incomprehensible, but we don't even need to go there. Even seemingly innocuous numbers are just insane. Take, for example, this number. The exclamation point just means that we take 100 times 98 times 97 times 96 all the way down to times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And it's called 100 factorial. Uh, to give you another example, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's equal to 720. 100 factorial is much bigger, obviously. That being said, I can write it out. I just did. It didn't take me that long. Like, yeah, that's a lot of digits, but you can see it. That's the whole number. You can see it right there. I just wrote it out. It's not that hard to write out. It's not that hard to explain. I just did it. So as far as giant numbers go, this seems pretty straightforward, pretty manageable. Except, no, absolutely not. I made it my mission to try to find a very concrete way to conceptualize how big this number is. So let's try to figure out how long it would take for us to count to 100 factorial. I'm going to start with a huge assumption, which is this, that it will take us one second to say every one number, which is already laughable. I mean, just for me to say 632,579 took me about 2.66 seconds, what he said, and of course, stuff like that. Baby numbers. Take 99 factorial, for example, which is a number that looks like this. This is a number that you will have to say on your way to counting to 100 factorial. And from what I can gather on the internet, mainly one particularly in-depth Reddit post, if I'm going to be honest, I think the way that you would write this number out in its entirety in English would be something like this. Now, I know this isn't exact, because on my way to trying to figure this out and writing it out, near the end I realized I must have made a mistake because I was off by like two place values somehow. But regardless, this is close enough. And whatever number this is, it's also something that you'll have to say at some point on your way to counting to 100 factorial. So whatever. I timed myself pronouncing this out loud and it took me two minutes and five seconds. Not one second which is what we're going to be assuming for the coming calculations, 125 seconds. And notice how many zeros this number ends with. So literally, literally the next like quintillion numbers that you count after this one will all begin by saying exactly all of this highlighted nonsense again. All of this and one. All of this and two. All of this and 312. All of this and... 76 trillion 459 billion 761 million 872 thousand 413 etc. Anyway, the point here is just that whatever answer we come up with for how long it will take to count to 100 factorial will be a severe, severe underestimate. Because, for example, we're assuming that it'll take you 11 seconds to count this number and the next 10 after it, when in fact it would take you over 20 minutes. Okay, so let's really try and start to figure this out. Again, this is 100 factorial. It is roughly 9 with 157 zeros after it. So, assuming that we count one number per second, this is also the number of seconds it will take us to count to 100 factorial. But how many seconds is that? Well, it turns out a year isn't enough. Not a hundred years, not a lifetime, not a hundred thousand lifetimes, not all of the multi-million year history of life on Earth, not even the four and a half billion year history of the planet itself. In fact, that would not even come remotely close. The entire history of multicellular life on Earth, from weird, reed-looking things, to the first fish, to animals coming out on land, to all of the before dinosaur history, to the entire reign of dinosaurs, through the age of mammals, through the Ice Age, and all of human history, all of that is already an amount of time that is literally unfathomable. It is something that we, we, we quite literally just cannot conceive of how long that is. And all of that is about 540 million years, just over half a billion. Compare that to the entire history of the universe itself. The Big Bang happened about 13.8 billion, with a B, years ago. Okay, well, how many seconds is that? Well, a little bit of math will show you that the entire history of the universe is this many seconds long. That's roughly a four with 17 zeros after it. 
which you might recall, is significantly less than 100 factorial. 100 factorial is a 158-digit number. This is a 18-digit number. So the entire history of the universe from the Big Bang on until now isn't even close to the amount of time required for us to count to 100 factorial, even assuming we count one number per second. A simple division problem will show you that you would need to run the entire 13.8 billion year history of the universe this many times in order to be able to count to 100 factorial going one number per second. And this number is almost one and a half Googles. A Google, by the way, is one with a hundred zeros after it. And as this kid's book from my childhood explains, Let's pretend uh, that we're really hungry and we want a Google Waffles for breakfast. How high would that stack of waffles be? Can you picture it? You can't. A Google Waffles would be 10 to the power of 80 light years high. Or in other words, 10 billion trillion 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 times the size of the universe. If you counted every proton, neutron, and electron in the entire universe, a Google is 100 quintillion times bigger than that. So that's a Google. And we would need way more than that many number of full universes with 13.8 billion year histories in order to have enough time for us to count to 100 factorial doing one number per second. And that is simply inconceivable, unimaginable. So we're going to need to be able to count faster. We're going to need to be able to count a lot faster. Light in a vacuum can travel about 300 million meters in one second. That's roughly equivalent to going around the entire circumference of the Earth at the equator seven and a half times in one second. Really fast. So imagine how instantaneously fast it would take for light in a vacuum to travel just one meter. How basically non-existent of a time that would be. That amount of time, the amount of time it takes for light in a vacuum to travel just one meter, is the amount of time I'm going to assume it takes us to count one number. Another way to put this would be to say that we can now count 300 million numbers in one second. If we started counting when you started watching this video, going this speed, we would already be at 138 billion 300 million, which frankly is less than I thought it would be. I guess it just goes to show you how much bigger a billion is compared to a million. So think about that the next time you hear about how rich the richest people in the world are. Nobody should have a billion dollars. What he said. Okay, now it's time for us to do a little bit of math. This is 100 factorial. And when we were assuming that we could count one number per second, this was also the amount of seconds it would take us to count to 100 factorial. But now we're assuming we can count 300 million times that fast. So a simple division problem shows us that this is the new number of seconds that it will take us to count to 100 factorial. Then if we divide that number by the number of seconds in the 13.8 billion year history of the universe, we'll get this new number, which is the number of times that you would need to run the entire history of the universe since the Big Bang over and over again in order to count to 100 factorial going at the speed that we're going. So now we have to find a way to conceptualize this number. Here's the best I can do. Estimates I could find for the number of atoms in the entire planet Earth seem to be around 10 to the power of 50. Estimates for the number of atoms in the whole observable universe seem to be between somewhere between uh, 10 to the power of 78 and 10 to the power of 82. So let's call it 10 to the power of 80. Multiply that by 10 to the power of 50 and you get 10 to the power of 131, which is as close as we're gonna get to our previous number. But what does any of that actually mean? Well, imagine the number of atoms in the entire observable universe. Every single atom from every person, every planet, every star, every asteroid, every atom, not just in our solar system, not just in our Milky Way galaxy, but in every last one of the hundreds of billions of galaxies that make up the observable universe. Every last atom. Now imagine that every single one of those atoms is in fact an entire planet Earth. 
So you should be thinking of a number of Earths equivalent to the number of atoms in the observable universe. Now imagine all of the atoms in all of those Earths combined. That number of atoms, the number of atoms in a number of Earths equivalent to the number of atoms in our observable universe, that's the number of times you would need to run the entire 13.8 billion year history of the universe since the Big Bang over and over again in order to have enough time to count to 100 factorial, even going 300 million numbers per second. So there you go. And look, I understand that that is also just fundamentally incomprehensible, but it's the best I can do to try to find a concrete way to help us understand just how big 100 factorial is. And again, this is a fairly innocuous seeming number. It's right there. That's it, that's the whole thing. You can see it, I wrote it out, and it's really easy to understand what it is. It's 100 times 98 times 97, on and on. That's pretty understandable. And even a number like that is that big. <laughs> and 100 factorial has nothing on numbers like a Googleplex, which is a one with a Google zeros after it. Or something like Graham's number, which you can look up on your own if you want. And even those numbers are finite. They seem basically infinite to us, but in principle, you could count to a Googleplex in a finite, measurable amount of time. And then you could do it again, and again, and again, an infinite number of times. Perhaps a possible takeaway here is that for however much we throw around concepts that have to do with infinity, for however much we sort of feel that intuitively we could at least vaguely understand it, no, we can't. Absolutely not. So maybe take this as a reminder to always have a little bit of humility and uncertainty when it comes to questions, hypotheticals, or ideas in general that have to do with infinity. A huge shout out, of course, to my Patreon supporters, most notably my Paleozoic patron, Greenscream, my Triassic patron, Dulce, and my Jurassic patron, Becky. All of your support really does mean a lot. And if there's anyone else out there that's interested in joining, there are a lot of cool perks available. For example, my patrons have known that this concept for this video has been in the works for like seven or eight months. <laughs> so once again, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Milo or the Majestic Mashikasaurus. And if you're interested in paleontology or just the natural world that we live in in general, I hope you stick around.